This is tough. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jazz Takar, and this is Crypto in a Minute. So what does a tokenized future look like? So first, let's define what tokenization actually is. Tokenization is the representation of real-world value on a blockchain with tokens. And so, you know, if we think about financial instruments, I see a future where equities and bonds and other instruments are represented as tokens on a blockchain. I also see more illiquid assets, such as real estate, uh, being represented on blockchains through tokens also. Um, so what does the future hold? What does all this mean for us individuals? It allows us all to own fractions of assets we otherwise could not afford. You know, I can't afford to fund a film, but maybe I can own a token that partially funds a movie. I could buy a token that represents a rainforest because I want to preserve it for ecological reasons. So look, I see a future where we all own value that we otherwise couldn't own. We own fractions of assets we otherwise couldn't own. And yeah, that's what I see. We good? Is that it? Can I go? Yo, what is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Zen Lounge. I have a quick video for you guys today. I'm going to go over a couple Ripple and XRP, XRPL updates for you guys. You just watched Crypto in One Minute with a gentleman named Jaws, and he describes the potential of a tokenized future in just 60 seconds. Hope you enjoy that clip. He also, uh, Ripple posts here, a house, a film, and a forest all have one thing in common. They are real-world assets that can be represented as tokens or fractionalized tokens on a blockchain. So I've been saying for a long time, tokenization of real world assets is going to be very, very important. Why? Because we're going to be moving in the future into deflationary times when there's not a lot of liquidity in the system, a liquidity crisis even potentially. And there will be a lot of trapped liquidity that needs to become more liquid. Tokenization of assets turns illiquid assets and makes them more liquid and speeds up the flow of liquidity. That's why I think it's going to be so important as deflation becomes more of a big narrative in the next, you know, I don't want to put a timeline on it, but it's going to happen. Even Elon Musk is calling it. So uh, tokenization of assets is really important. If you guys watched my video from a few days ago, uh, Ripple is now publishing about the Ripple pilot that has a USD backed stablecoin on the XRP ledger. We talked about this a few videos ago. And uh, there's citizens and merchants in the island of Palau, which are using a stablecoin directly on the public XRP ledger. That means governments are backing pilot programs right now on the XRP ledger as I'm speaking. That's very exciting. That's real world utility on the XRP ledger. So now we have the narrative of real world tokenized assets on the XRP ledger, stable coins on the XRP ledger. So much is happening. And the technology is not even finished yet. What David Schwartz has been working on for the past year is public. Uh, the past 10 years, his vision was to create these public liquidity pools that anybody could source liquidity from. Remember, liquidity is going to be very important in the future as we move into these liquidity crisis scenarios. Certic has completed their audit. So the way that the XRPL validators work is they need to put a proposal on the XRP ledger network, the, valid the, the validators need to vote. 80 plus percent need to give it a thumbs up and they need to keep a thumbs up for two consecutive weeks. Then the validators approve the amendment and then they're able to update the software and there will be uh, liquidity pools, automate automated market makers on the XRP ledger which anyone can provide liquidity to and earn commissions via the bots. And uh, also people could pull liquidity from this on a decentralized exchange, which is the XRPL, the first ever, the oldest running, the most credible uh, decentralized exchange, never been hacked, never been exploited, knocked on wood. I feel pretty secure about that. And this is one of the newest videos I found on XLS30. So we're gonna finish this video real quick with a video from David Schwartz. He's in, in, um, in Asia. And the reason you're able to earn commissions by providing liquidity is this feature here. It's called a continuous auction mechanism. 
the auctions, transactions, advantages to arbitrage users at low feed on a 24 hour basis. This is also supposed to help the, the volatility of an asset like XRP so it's more stable. So it brings lots of benefits to the XRP LDEX, XRP holders, uh, the XRP price, so much, so much. And this is the secret sauce, he calls it, the secret sauce, the automated market maker, or we could call it a nickname, automated money maker. Enjoy this clip, guys. Thanks for stopping by the Zen Lounge. Please give some comments. Please give me a thumbs up. And thank you guys for watching my video. See you guys next time. On the, the topic of um, Ripple and the XRP Ledger, addressing the elephant in the room, um, uh, you know, and, and kind of building in uh, into our, our talk about um, real world asset tokenization. How, how has the recent so called partial victory uh, in the case bought by the SEC? Um, against Ripple affected the ability to proceed with developments such as uh, real world asset tokenization on the XLP ledger? I mean, it's been a huge milestone. Uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help, you know, many players in the crypto in, in the crypto space, particularly exchanges, you know, that do business in the United States. I don't think it's going to significantly affect Ripple's ability to do any of the things that Ripple's doing. And I don't think it's going to significantly affect the XRP ledger's ability to do any of the things the XRP ledger is doing. The biggest practical effect is that exchanges relisted XRP, presumably given the timing, it's presumably in response to this, this in their public statements, it's presumably in response to this ruling, which makes it easier for people to, you know, it makes it more liquid, it makes it easier for people to transact with it. But, um, but I don't think it's going to have. I don't think it's going to make significant differences in Ripple's ability to do what Ripple wants to do, and it certainly shouldn't affect anybody who wants to use the XRP ledger and their ability. And again, you know, this was a pretty significant milestone, so you know, better. Yeah, and beyond that milestone, what what's next for the XRP ledger? Um, how how can you achieve that? And what's your plan to achieve that next level of uh, widespread adoption? Well, one of the things that I'm very personally excited about is XLS30, which is an automated market maker, which fits, just fits really nicely in with the other features that the XRP Ledger has. I think another big thing you're gonna see is the same technology that's used in the XRP Ledger being used for other projects that have similar needs. You're gonna see that with stable coins. You're gonna see that with uh, tokenization, of, of, uh, with, uh, tokenization of assets like real estate. Um, people who don't want to be, not everything needs to be on the same blockchain, and I think replicating that technology to have side chains that are application specific is going to be interesting. I'm personally just really excited about the automated market because that's something that's been, the, the sort of mechanics of the trading of assets have been interesting to me for a long time. And in particular, it really helps with the volatility. One of the big obstacles to adoption of cryptocurrency is the volatility of their price, and that'll really help with that. And, um, you know, we're, we're in Tokyo today, while you're in Japan, um, you know, you, you have this large XRP support base here. Um, the XRP has the support of SBI holding CEO Yoshitaka Kitao, um, who has said that he believes all Japanese banks would adopt XRP by 2025. That's only 18 months away. Um, can that happen? And um, how can the XRP ledger kind of get to that point? I'm, I'm very nervous about predicting the future. I don't have a crystal ball, and as you know, you know circumstances circumstances can change can change. But I have to say, like XRP was built as a sort of value exchange system. It was built as a way to sort of pool liquidity. One of the earliest visions that we had for the XRP ledger in 2012 was this idea of sort of public pools of liquidity that anybody could contribute to and draw off of, so that you wouldn't be stuck with the liquidity. Like if you make a payment at your an international payment at your bank, you get whatever liquidity the bank has, and it's a revenue stream for them. Like if you could draw off all of the revenue, all of the pools of liquidity, anybody who had either, you know, Apple has a whole bunch of money stuck in Ireland for no particular reason. Like if you, people need money in Ireland, like Apple would love to have a marketplace in which they could sort of provide that to people. And I think that, that model resonates well with financial institutions. Ripple has had great success marketing, you know, more sophisticated payment systems that can settle with digital assets. Uh, to financial institutions. I would, I, I would personally wouldn't put a time frame on it though because sometimes it feels like we're moving blindingly fast and sometimes it seems like things take forever. And it's very, these are very conservative institutions. But obviously, you know, Katao san would know the Japanese banks better than I would. Okay, great. So uh, we've timed it perfectly there, David. So thank you very much and uh, thank you to everyone for listening. Thank you all. Thanks to everyone. Thank you, gentlemen. Big round of applause, please. Very, very interesting indeed.